A society that tells women that being a mother, that being a, uh, the housekeeper, that the one who is doing perhaps one of the most essential jobs in society is a degrading position. They talk about it. She's chained to the kitchen sink like she's some slave, like it's some menial task. And rather the woman who is honoured is what? The actress, the model, the super businesswoman. And the more clothes she takes off, the more honoured she is. This is the woman they honour in this society. The career woman, the politician, the woman who's a doctor, the woman who's this and who's that. Look at her, how successful she is, how independent she is. And anyone who stays at home, looking after the children, oh, look at that poor little thing. Look at her. Oh, yes, you know what I'm talking about. This is a society that oppresses women. And you know what? You see it everywhere. You see miserable women. Women who've reached 35 years old, and they're desperate to have kids. Suddenly it hits them. Suddenly their nature overtakes them. And now what do we find? In order to overcome this, science comes in. They've introduced this intro, intro viral, I can't remember what it's, uh, intro viral fertilization. And women are being fertilized when they don't even, they're not even capable of producing eggs anymore. But they get fertilized and they're having children at 40, at 50. Because they missed out. Because of the pressure society put on them. This is oppressing women. This is taking women away from her nature. This is her making her feel inadequate if she is a mother and if she is a wife and she is a homekeeper, she is made to feel inferior. That is oppression. It is a society that treats women as a commodity. As a commodity. That is a society that oppresses and denigrates women. It is an evil and unjust and tyrannical society. Do not be confused, my brothers and sisters, in Islam. Do not be confused. Do not be taken in by their propaganda. Do not be influenced by their lies. And believe me, they have sown the seeds of their own destruction. They have sown the seeds of their own destruction. And you see it. Because who is looking after the kids? Who gives the kids the love and the care and the attention that they need? Who is there to teach the kids the morality? Right from wrong. Manners. You know who it is? MTV. PlayStation. Because mummy is out working along with daddy. Huh? And who else is looking after the children? Who is looking after them? Can anyone look after a child like the mother? No. And so you find children coming with no morals, no concept of right and wrong, violence, sex, drugs, music, fantasy is the norm for them. That is the norm for them. And love, they haven't found love in the home. So what do they do? They join gangs. That's what they do. They join gangs. They look for it somewhere. If they can't find it in the home, they'll try to find somewhere to belong. It's happening in America. It happens in England. I'm sure it happens here in Australia. Kids on the street. Doing all sorts of things. Why? Because there was no one who nurtured them. They are sowing the seeds of their own destruction. They have already done it. And now they are reaping the evil rewards of their evil philosophy and their injustice and their tyranny. And they blame us. And they point the finger at us. They point the finger at Islam. They are the guilty ones. They are the oppressors. They are the tyrants. They are one, the ones who have degraded women and taken them from their nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for. In which they should feel pride. Look what Islam teaches my brothers and sisters. Look at the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
The women, woman is honored in Islam. The woman is honored, revered in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, reverence Allah and the wombs that bore you. Reverence Allah and the wombs that bore you. And the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. And the word Raham for womb, it's from the same root. And whoever cuts off from the womb, then Allah will cut off from them, as the Prophet ﷺ said. It is one of the greatest sins in Islam to disobey your parents, especially your mother. Especially your mother. Al-Araf. What is Al-Araf? Al-Araf. As Abdullah ibn Abbas he said, Al-Araf is the heights. It is a place, some mountains between the hellfire and paradise. And who is on Al-Araf? Abdullah ibn Abbas he described it. Some mountains with some rivers and some lakes. And on this place and on these mountains are people who fought jihad in the path of Allah and were killed martyrs. But they went and fought that jihad against their parents' wishes. So the good of their fighting jihad is equaled by the evil of their disobeying their parents. Subhanallah. When a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "O Messenger of Allah, who has the most right to my kindness?" And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Your mother." And after that, Messenger of Allah, your mother. And after that, Messenger of Allah, your mother. And after that, Messenger of Allah, then your father. Your mother, your mother, your mother. Paradise lies at the feet of your mother. May your face be rubbed in the dust. May you be humiliated, a person whose parents reach old age and they do not enter paradise by failing to serve them. They do not enter paradise because they failed to serve their old parents. May you be humiliated, the person who reaches that time. Allah has accorded such honor to the parents, but particularly to the mother. Particularly to the mother. She is the one who bore you for nine months in pain and suffering. She gave birth to you and cared for you. You could never, ever ever pay your mother back ever there is nothing you can do to pay your mother back this is what our deen islam teaches to respect the woman you can never pay her back if your father if you found your father a slave you bought him and set him free you'd pay him back but your mother there's nothing you can do a man came with his mother on his back to umar ibn al khattab Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, I have taken my mother on my back through the whole of the Hajj. The whole of the Hajj. Did I pay her back? Umar he replied, Young man, you didn't pay her back for one tear she shed when she gave birth to you. And Islam oppresses women? No. Islam honors women for what Allah has created her for, for her nature. It honors her for what is her nature. And that is giving someone their rights. That is giving someone their rights. And that is why Allah made men the maintainers and protectors of women. They are the glass vessels. The best of you are the ones who are best to their wives. The best of you are the ones who are best to their wives. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught. How far, unfortunately, many Muslims are from the commands of Allah, from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no doubt that there are many Muslims who are abusive and tyrannical and who do oppress their women. But that's not Islam. Islam is not responsible for that any more than Islam is responsible for a Muslim who drinks alcohol or takes drugs or kills innocent human beings. Islam is free from that. Islam teaches us to honor women, to respect them, but for their nature. 
the best of you are the, those who are best to their wives. And of course the Prophet ﷺ was the one who is best to their wives. And Allah has made men the maintainers and protectors of women. They are the glass vessels. They are delicate. They are sensitive. They need to be treated with care and with love and with patience. Allah has given them a certain nature. A certain nature, they need that nature in order to be able to look after the children. You could never do it brothers, never. But that nature means that there is something about them. They have certain emotions, they have certain emotional responses that they need those responses to deal with the important task of raising the children. And that means you have to deal with them brothers in a certain way. You have to be patient with them. There are certain things that happen to them at a certain time of the month and it means that sometimes they behave in quite a crazy way. And, but they need that. That's the way Allah created them. Those chemicals are there for a reason. It happens for a reason. And we should honor that. This is Allah's creation. Perfect creation. Perfect at doing what Allah intended it to do. And we have to respect that. They are glass vessels. Treat them with kindness. Treat them with softness. Leave them the way they are. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ said, Woman is created from the bent, from the rib. And the most bent part of the rib is the topmost part. The mind, the mentality. So enjoy women the way they are. The Prophet told us, enjoy them. Enjoy them the way they are. With this bentness, this, this, this way that they are, but enjoy them. Because if you try to straighten them, you'll never be able to do it. And the straightening of it, in fact, will be divorce. You're trying to change Allah's nature that He created. Don't do it. Enjoy them the way they are. It is part of their beautiful quality that makes the women the, 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 the thing that we love. And especially the righteous women. About whom the Prophet ﷺ said, The whole world is green and verdant. But the most precious thing in this dunya, and subhanAllah, wallahi, that is the truth. The Prophet always spoke the truth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most precious thing in this dunya is a righteous woman. There is nothing better and nothing more precious in this world than a righteous woman. And whoever marries a righteous woman, inshallah will succeed. Whoever marries a woman for just her beauty, or just her wealth, or her lineage, what will you get? Believe me, misery. Marry the righteous one. Marry the pious one. Marry the religious one and be successful. This is the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. This is the path to a beautiful and successful society. It is the foundation of it. Islam recognizes it. Confucianism recognized it also. In fact, every sensible society knows that the very foundation of society is the family. And at the heart of every family is the woman who teaches and cares and nurtures for the children. So we honor her. Islam teaches us to honor her, to respect her as our mother, to revere her. And they say that Islam does not give women their rights. And they say that Islam oppresses women. You know there's a saying that we should give back to them. A saying that from their own books that they say they believe in. A beautiful saying attributed to Jesus. You know what it is? It says, take the log out of your eye before you try and take a twig out of somebody else's. You've got a great big log in your eye and you're trying to take a twig out of someone else's eye? Huh? That's what they're doing. They see a twig in our eye and they've got a great big log in theirs. They're so busy criticizing us. But if we compare the two, surely they are people on complete, almost complete misguidance in that regard. So my dear brothers and sisters and dear listeners, 
When we really examine Islam, when we study the Qur'an, when we study the example of our noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will truly see that Islam is the religion that accords the women 